Hey everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And yes, it's going to be another DTF video because this week I was down in Houston visiting with a guild and uh, they actually wanted a hands-on demo on how to apply a DTF. So I'd already had this shirt and I thought, well, what the heck, you know, this one's already done up and I'll just go ahead and slap this little uh, Hummer on the other side of the front. <clears throat> so the shop that we were at kindly allowed me to use their iron. And we turned it on and went to the highest cotton setting and about, I gave it about five minutes to get good and hot. Well, you know, to be honest with you, it never got what I thought was really good and hot. Um, so I, I, I went ahead and did the first 20 seconds, kind of did it all over, set it aside to let it cool. Now I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see some of this. Um, let me actually zoom in with the camera itself. Ah, there we go. Do y'all see this? This white stuff right here and right there. That is actually ink that, or rather, excuse me, not ink. The, the black is the ink. But this right here is excess adhesive. Um, it never quite melted. And I must have tried putting this DTF down three times. And finally, one of the ladies who worked in the shop said, look, we have a, a heat press. Do you want to try with that? So sure enough, I turned on the heat press. We got it up to 325, set it for 20 seconds, and voila, it worked great. And that's how this ended up maintaining itself and not, you know, except again with a little bit of echoing from the glue, it, it all went down just fine. So we were all speculating as to why this has happened. And I believe it is because the iron itself did not get hot enough. Um, I have two irons here. I'm going to show you um, as I put this side of the shirt, excuse me. Uh, my first one is the one I've been telling everybody about. It's an old Black & Decker light and easy steam slash dry iron. Now, what makes this iron so wonderful is that it does not have an automatic shutoff. Here, let me get this, keep this in the picture. Because what I want to show you, um, again, at first I thought that the shop uh, problem was the actual... Um, uh, wattage, but I'm going to zoom here and see if I can get this here real quick. Hang on. There we go. All right. This little sucker is only 1100 watts. Uh, made in Singapore here. I'm going to show you all, all of the information so that if you want to try to track one of these down, uh, please do, because let me just say that this is probably one of the best irons I've had in a very long time. So I, I, at first I thought their wattage at the shop was too low. Now I'm going to flip over here and show you my Bartonelli, and it has 1,700 watts. And frankly, this iron is what I have been using to apply DTFs with, and it's worked just fine. Now it does have an auto shut off. So when um, I'm actually applying the DTF, I always try to, you know, lightly touch the iron and just get a, a, a sense of how hot it is. And both of these irons get super uber hot. Now, from what I've gathered, doing a little bit more investigation about this, is that iron elements do eventually go out. Uh, now, I have used both of these irons every single day that I'm out here in the studio working. Um, in fact, I'm about ready to use my Black & Decker. I've got a commission shirt that I need to put bling on. And this is my favorite go-to uh, when I need to do a large, large area. The Black & Decker is the one that I like to go to. Now, most of you know that I've also recommended the little small applique iron. But I got a lot of bling to put on. And I want to do it in kind of one 
fell swoop method. Now I could use the heat press to be frank with you, but because most of you do not have a heat press, I'm trying to find every way possible for you not to have to go out and buy um, a heat press. Look, I'd rather you buy, I, I believe this was a $30 iron. I'd rather recommend to you that you go out and buy a $30 iron, such as this Black & Decker, rather than going and buying a heat press. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to investigate what it takes to figure out your iron temperature. I'm pretty sure that I'm getting up to at least the 320, which is what most DTF printers recommend as the at, at least a minimum temperature of 320 in order for the glue to melt satisfactorily and to keep the ink embedded into the fabric. So that's it. As always, just wanted to give you, and again, let me just show you that the DTF came out good. I mean, I'm, I'm going to come back to this here real quick. Um, the glue's there, but again, it's, it's down, it's solid, um, and it looks great. Um, I'll probably be using this here in a couple of weeks. In, uh, in Denton, I will be uh, doing a presentation on denim and DTFs for the Denton Guild. Um, so any information that I glean from that or some of the questions, I will try to follow up with videos to address any of their concerns so that all of you can get the benefit of it. All right, as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comment section. And thanks for watching.